Thank you, Francine. Thank you very much. So, yes, it's my great, great pleasure to welcome on stage a man, a man who became president of FIFA in February 2016, a man, in fact, who brings always joy, enthusiasm, passion. And since then, FIFA has been transformed into a widely respected, efficiently governed and trusted, worthy organization. Under his, the, its Football Unite the World campaign, it has formed partnership with various United Nations agencies and regional, international, and intergovernmental bodies highlighting important social cause. This is why the FI Institute were extremely proud as, uh, to be having on stage with us our friend Gianni Fantino. Gianni, please. As part of his vision uh, of making football truly global, FIFA has increased the amount of funding for football development sevenfold since 2016, prioritizing women's football, expanding youth competition, and providing more opportunities for players across the world. Jenny, great to see you. Thank you. Last year, we closed FII 6 together with a virtual session called uh, Why Football Rules the World. And you were live from Doha, getting ready for the World Cup in Qatar, which was a massive success, no? It was uh, the best FIFA World Cup ever. So, <laughs> this year, as you know, Gianni FI has the team called the New Compass. We are talking our amazing speakers uh, and for three days about where the Compass is pointing today. Uh, where is the wind blowing, uh, the wind blowing? This is to help investors from business and government understand where they can invest their money to make the biggest impact of the world. So let me ask you, uh, given everything that is happening to the world today, where is your compass pointing? Well, our compass is pointing a little bit everywhere, if this is at all possible. But uh, you can see I'm, I'm here with, uh, with this. This is the ball of uh, the final of the last FIFA Women's World Cup in uh, Australia and New Zealand. It's a very special ball, though, because, of course, it has the name of uh, the FII and the date of today, so wow. we can think what we can do with it. I will give it to you after maybe all the speakers can sign and then you can auction it for a good cause. Amazing. But you see that as soon as a ball enters the room, everyone is smiling. Everyone is, has joy in his face, in her face. And uh, I think this is exactly where uh, football has to head and wants to head. Making football truly global, uniting the world through football. These are not just slogans, but uh, actions that we want to put in place. I just give you, since you were speaking about, uh, about numbers and, and, and figures, uh, and here we have, uh, of course, the creme de la creme of uh, the business people in the world. The global football GDP, is around 200 billion a year, right? Um, soccer for the Americans. Amazing. The, this 200 billion are generated essentially by around 70% in Europe. And from that 70% who go to Europe, 70% come from investments from outside Europe. Now, if we can get the rest of the world to do maybe 30%, of what Europe does, we are speaking about the half a trillion economy a year only for football. And these are only figures because we know that football is much, much more than just a, a game. It has a social impact, it has an emotional impact. It uh, manages to bring really people together, to make people understand each other. And uh, we need to really work in this, uh, in this direction because, uh, especially in our divided world, we need occasions to come together, to speak with each other, to know each other, uh, and what better than a football game? Precisely, uh, your 2030 vision, FIFA's 2030 vision, outlines the commitment to making football truly global. Could you provide insight into how this vision will further enhance the global influence and impact uh, of the sport? <clears throat> yes, we, we've always been saying that uh, Football is, which it is, the, the number one sport in the world, right? But when you scratch a little bit at the surface, you realize that when it comes to top football, but then also to grassroots football, 
uh, that surface looks very much differently in a few countries in Europe towards the rest of the world and the rest of Europe even. So our mission has to be to bring football everywhere, to invest in all parts of the world. We have been able to uh, multiply our investments in the last seven years by a multiplier of seven. So it's like if you give to your shareholder seven times more than what they were used to receive. But this is targeted to invest in football, in football pitches, in dressing rooms, in stadiums. So that in the rest of the world, whilst helping Europe to grow, because it's very important to have a locomotive which is strong, helping the others as well to, uh, uh, to come up and uh, to compete. We increased the number of teams in the World Cup and suddenly many more teams have a chance to participate. We had eight debutants at the last Women's World Cup and uh, national teams from six continents won at least one game. Teams from five continents qualified for the knockout phase. This has never happened yeah. in the past. Same for the beautiful World Cup in Qatar where Morocco reached the semi-final. This had never happened before. And this is uh, uh, certainly due to a constant investment, development, uh, nurturing of talents, because you have talents everywhere. You just have to find them and have to grow them. Precisely about uh, being extremely global, uh, how do you view the role of football in promoting this uh, cultural exchange and, I would say, global uh, unity? Well, I think, uh, as, as, as we have seen in the past as well, um, whenever there is a big celebration like, uh, like a World Cup and you have literally millions of people coming or being interested by, by an element. We had in the Women's World Cup two million spectators and two billion watching it on TV. For the Men's World Cup it was three million and five billion people. So when you have all these people who live a passion, because they don't just watch a movie or uh, uh, play a game, they share, they communicate, they feel a passion all together. We, when we can bring them all together, and this was my message as well, I remember before the World Cup in, uh, in, in Qatar in 2022, saying to the people of the world, well, come. There, were, there was criticism for many reasons, some justified, other not. Come and witness, come and spend time, speak with the people, learn to know the people, and you will see that actually we have many more things in common than what we don't have in common. And let's build on this. So the more competitions we have, the more participants we have, the more occasions we have to force people to meet on a football field rather than uh, somewhere else, sadly, uh, we, should, we should push for that. Jenny, you are, and I know how humble you are, but you are one of the most powerful men in the world today, and you know that. All world leaders want to be with you, they all want to bring uh, uh, everything that you are carrying through FIFA, but I know how much football also was helping to sometimes was used to conflict resolution, building peace. So uh, can you discuss, uh, can you tell us more about how football has played or could play uh, an amazing role on conflict resolution? I think historically football has always had the chance to, uh, to play a role. I think the magic is rather on this ball here than uh, on, on, on the people we try to do a little bit, of course, but uh, I mean, the famous truce in the First World War where at Christmas Day uh, the two parties put away the guns and played a football match uh, for uh, an hour or so and then they went back for, for the war. But also more recently, when, uh, when we see what the organization of an event means, when we see what uh, uh, Patrice Motsepe is there, South Africa organized the World Cup in 2010, brilliantly uniting the whole of Africa. It was not the South African World Cup, it was the World Cup for the whole of a continent who felt proud, who felt hope. And that's what we have to give to the new generation. For everything we have been discussing here, whether we speak about conflicts, whether we speak about violence, whether we speak about climate, we need to give hope. We need to give uh, uh, pride to the people all over the world. When we saw that uh, in the last bidding process for the next World Cup in uh, 2026, United States, Canada and Mexico were bidding together, 
in a period where there were discussions about building a wall, wall. between uh, Mexico and the United States. Well, in this particular period, the two countries were bidding together to host the biggest show on earth together. And they managed to win, and they will organize a fantastic World Cup in 2026. So there are many, many occasions. Pelé managed to uh, get a ceasefire in Nigeria um, in the 60s. There are many examples, but uh, I think we have to look forward as well. We have to look at uh, uh, what football can do to, uh, to unite now in this uh, more and more uh, divided world. I hope that uh, some of the countries, some of the regions which are suffering today, tomorrow they can join forces and maybe host uh, a FIFA event together. There are also failures. Eh? I, when South Korea was bidding for the Women's World Cup, I traveled myself to North Korea trying to convince them to join forces. I, I failed, but uh, I will continue to try everything. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please, a round of applause for Gianni Fantino, a peace builder, the man who with FIFA built bridges instead of bringing wars. Right. Thank you, Gianni. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much.